Before I go into the message for the session, I want to take a little moment to um, talk about the Remnant Christian Network. It's a strategy of the spirit that God, not necessarily the name of a ministry, but this, a strategy that the spirit of God revealed um, to accelerate the purposes of God across the nations and to create openings for the revival of God to come into territories. I will read the scripture quickly and um, after that I will say a thing or two. Isaiah chapter 1. Once again, I want to say good morning to you all in Jesus' name. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotam, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, the seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? Why should you revolt more and more? The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores that have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land strangers devour it in your presence and is desolate as overthrown by strangers and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Then we see the strategy in verse 9, except the Lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So what we see, what we see in the reading that I just did is the obituary of, of a civilization. And the major trust of the prophetic utterances of Isaiah, because if you check the list of the kings that were mentioned here, apart from David and Solomon, these were the most mighty kings in Israel. And the nation flourished greatly. Its defenses were put in place and the territorial integrity was secured within the time of the reign of these rulers. But the major trust of the body of the prophet was that the civilization, the um, prosperity that the land was enjoying was at the expense of her covenant commitment with God. And the prophet was saying that this prosperity is a bubble and it's going to burst because the laws of God have been compromised, they have been trivialized. And the prosperity blinded them to the fact that it was the covenant that they had with God that was responsible for the breakthroughs that the nation was enjoying. Obviously, they, they turned deaf ears to the warnings of Isaiah. And the righteous nature of God will always compel God to judge unrighteousness, to judge sin, to judge iniquity. And it's a very complex situation with the nation of Israel because God had eternal covenants that were standing in that nation. So how could God, who is a righteous God, administer justice, judgment, and equity to a people, a generation that have decided to violate 
his laws and his agreements with them, and yet still keep the covenants that he has established with their ancestors, with their fathers. Are you seeing the two sides of the divide? So the way God did it was that he actually brought judgment, but he left a remnant to continue the possibilities that was obtainable in the covenant he had with their ancestors. So the, the, the remnant initiative is a strategy of the spirit that is designed by God to um, trap down um, um, the content of the covenants that God has with many fathers of various territories that he cut covenant with about the destiny of those lands. It's a strategy by which those covenants can still be functional in spite of the fact that uh, justice, judgment, and equity for transgression and trespass need to be administered by a righteous God. So you see, there are things that God agreed. Like when I went to uh, Scotland, I went to Edinburgh in search of anything that has to do with John Knox because I've seen John Knox in the spirit once before. So I went to, to Edinburgh uh, and then we found his house. So that it, it's like a museum now. Everything was kept, the, the seats he used, the tables he used, his study room was kept as much as possible. So when I got to his study room, a fire came upon my head and burned for 45 minutes. Because there was a covenant that God had with that man who happens to be an intercessor. And God must keep that covenant in spite of the fact that other generations have come and have pitched their tents with Satan. So the strategy by which God strikes that balance is that he keeps a remnant that he uses as instruments for the recovery of the things that God had promised their ancestors. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. For instance, the call of um, Moses was not because Moses was an intercessor. It was occasioned by things that have transacted, that were transacted generations before his arrival. He just was a vessel that became a victim of God's attempt to bring to pass the contracts and the agreements he had with the ancestors of the nation of Israel. So what I'm saying is that we are victims. We are victims of transactions that took place overhead. And God had an intention to preserve several heritages, and that's why he apprehended us as remnants. And our major merchandise is revival. May the Lord give you understanding. 